Welcome to part whatever it is, I swear if I forgot, but uh, I decided to start this video by actually showing you what the problem is right now with the extruder as I didn't explain it too much in the last video and the problem is, as you can see, while the extruder is turning hopefully you can make that out, it's not turning really fast and yeah, if we check this area you will notice that it's not printing pretty much anything but you can see a very slight amount of filament on the heat pad so that basically means that the extruder isn't turning as fast as it's supposed to and I did check the E-steps, they are set up properly and yeah, the G-code is set up properly as well from the slicer and yeah, my assumption is there's something set up wrong in the G-code there are two options that I have in mind either there is a speed limit on the on this e-motor that is causing this problem either that or this motor is skipping steps either one is possible but yeah the solution seems should be pretty straightforward I need to figure out wherever the speed limit is set if that's the case if, that's, if it's skipping steps then I need to turn of the water current and if that doesn't fix it but I'm still sure it's about skipping steps then I can just switch to the old motor that I used to use there well not this but not the same one as this I grabbed the wrong one the reason that I switched to this motor initially is because this is smaller and hopefully uh, quite a bit quieter but yeah, we will see. Anyway, I don't want to make this longer too long because I also want to get quite a bit done with this. So yeah, I'm going to cut it here and I'll come back to you whenever I made some progress. This is actually just about an hour later since I recorded the last part. But as you can see, I've managed to get some prints out of this. And yeah, I'll say that both of my initial theories were wrong and yeah even though i've been doing this 3d printing thing for a year i still can't figure out basic stuff i guess the problem is that the film extruder is turning properly i actually upped the current but that really wasn't necessary as it turns out and the problem is the missing bearing in there that i mentioned in the last video as you may recall i lost a bearing inside the extruder and yeah that's basically causing this issue and what the issue is is that the extruder is actually extruding up until some point but basically it gets triggered by some movement and it gets misaligned enough for the filament to get out of the teeth and it doesn't extrude properly but if I manually push this filament uh, it actually turns properly in there and extrudes for a while but again after some point it stops again so yeah, it's basically about the missing bearing. The good thing is the bearing apparently entered the country and I'm expecting it to arrive pretty soon. I'm recording this on Monday, so there is still a chance that I will be able to release this video on Friday. And here is our first print in quotation marks. Well, yeah, you can see the, how uneven the extrusion is on this. And yeah, right now I'm blaming the, the missing bearing, so yeah we'll see so today is Tuesday and the new bearings have arrived as you can see these are MR95 bearings I don't know what the ZZ means I ordered 10 of these because well that's basically how large the cheapest order was from the place that I ordered these from and yeah as you can see they are roughly the same size I'm not sure about thickness that's why I said I don't think they are the exact same in the last video because the thickness I think it wasn't listed or something let's double check and yeah the new ordered bearings I'm not really sure if you will be able to see this difference maybe if you view it in HD as you can see the newer bearings are a bit thicker but hopefully they will be good enough and otherwise yeah, they are basically the same size so I'll put this one here and insert it back into the machine and hopefully it will work and hopefully we will be able to get a print this time I was wrong yet again as you can see I'm 
not getting a proper print again. The amount of extruded filament that you see is some uh, just some parts that I managed to push by putting force on the extruder, but yeah, it's not extruding anything by itself. And now, I, after the new bearings, I am not able to actually push the filament in without actually unlocking the clip here. So at least the uh, bearing did something good. Uh, it means that now there is more force on the filament's gear teeth, which is a good thing, otherwise it wouldn't work properly anyway, but still, the fact that I'm not getting a print means that there's still something that I need to fix. And I'm again leaning towards this motor, because, yeah, if I remember correctly, this thing turned way faster than it turns right now. And, yeah, so my initial theories were still correct, and I still need to figure out what the hell is wrong with this, but... I went through the code, there is no speed limit that I can see, and yeah, because of that, I honestly have no idea what's making this thing turn this slow, but yeah, at least I guess that's for me to figure out, so yeah, I'm going to go through the G-code again, and see. Finally, I'm able to get some proper prints out of this, uh, let me get this light so you can see. As you can see, it's extruding properly, finally, and yeah, this was just like a 5 minute fix. It was me being an idiot, basically, but the bearings were still needed. I'll explain both of those now, so the problem that I, problem with the rust recording that I did was basically, if you remember from the, well, I don't know how many of you were watching back then, but when I upgraded to Flex 3 Drive, and I couldn't get the motor to turn at the speed that it needs to turn because the, at the time the board that I was using, which was the MKS Gen, wasn't able to generate enough steps for this motor to turn. I had to divide the steps that the drivers were generating by 8 and because of that, it, the steps value that I entered in the firmware was divided by 8 as well. When upgrading to the Duet Wi-Fi, I kept the same settings uh, but sorry, I kept the uh, same setting that I used for the rest of the motors and didn't kept uh, divided by 8 settings but I entered the same steps value and that was the reason that this thing was turning slow, nothing else so yeah, that part was me being an idiot but at the same time, because of the fact that I was able to push this filament through before putting the new bearing in there means that it wouldn't have worked without the new bearing anyway so that was also a needed change but anyway, it looks like I've managed to get this thing to work finally. Now what I need to do is make sure that this motor doesn't overheat. And yeah, after that we'll need to do some calibration based on the extrusion amounts and see, get the extrusion to properly. Uh, what I mean that is just setting the E steps, X steps and Y steps properly and Z steps. So. Yeah, there's still a bit to do before we actually get to print something useful with this, but yeah, it looks like it's happening this week and hopefully it will, we'll see, depends if this motor overheats or not. And now I finally have the first print from the new upgrades from the sprinter, and yeah, I try to show you, unfortunately since I'm using black filament, it's not going to look great on camera, but yeah, I'll do my best to show everything to you. In my opinion, for a first print from the settings, it looks pretty much great, as good as it can be. And I actually haven't checked the accuracy of any of these, so let's also check that. And yeah, I need to increase the X steps by a little bit. Y steps. I should measure this way. Yeah, there I need to increase the Y steps a little bit as well. And Z. Also requires a small increase, but yeah, it is pretty close to what it's supposed to be, so I don't really need to do too much tinkering. As for any extrusion, I don't really see much of an over extrusion. I think there is a little bit under extrusion in fact, but I'm not 100% right now. 
either way, after I adjust the X, Y, and Z steps and see how it looks, I'll decide whether I should increase or decrease the E steps. I'm not 100% at this point. Yeah, I think it's a bit of an under extrusion now that I look on the surface as well. But anyway, I'll tinker that later. First, I need to fix these and then adjust the E steps. And then, yeah, we'll do something else in this video. I'm not 100% sure what it's going to be. As for actually comparing this to the older older prints that I had from two months ago, from the old board, etc. I'll do that after I print the layer fan because otherwise it really wouldn't be a fair comparison as I don't have a layer fan right now and obviously the overhangs, etc. aren't going to print properly without a layer fan. So yeah, I need to do that. But first I need to design that as well. So I'm not sure if it will be this week. Anyway, we will see. I had this thermocouple installed for the duration of the last print just to measure the temperature of the motor and I had this in the maximum mode as you can see I'm just cycling through them and there we go this is maximum mode so it basically recorded the maximum temperature that I reached by the way it's now reset that's why you don't see it but yeah it bas I recorded the maximum temperature and the temperature that I saw the highest for this print which I think it lasted close to an hour I didn't exactly measure the time so I'm not 100% but yeah in that hour or so the highest temperature that I reached was 57 degrees celsius which is a bit on the high side but it's not terrible it's something that I can live with so I don't consider this a problem I think it's good enough and yeah, I am about to start the next sprint. The bad compensation failed, so yeah, I'm going to need to redo this. But yeah, I'm about to start the next sprint, so we'll see how much I will improve over this. I now have my second print done. As you can see, sorry, this is the best that I'm going to be able to film this because they are black. The newer prints looks much better. The one on the right is the new one, the one on the left is the older one. I also improved the dimensional accuracy on the X and Y. Z is a bit off, but not to the point where I feel like it's too inaccurate, so I'm going to live with that. But as I said, X and Y are pretty much spot on, like, yeah, within margin of error, so yeah, it's, it's now done. The, steps calibration etc is now done and also as you can see the under extrusion problem is gone it's the most obvious from the top it's harder to see from the sides especially because of the camera but yeah there it's done so the next thing in my priority list would be to get the layer fan designed and printed which i'm going to get to in this video but before that you might have noticed that i don't have any time lapses of these cubes being printed and that's because I don't have Octoprint running yet and I want to time-lapse that one so yeah basically the next priority is to get the uh, Octoprint working so yeah hope everything theoretically is supposed to just work I, I'm so I think I wired everything properly I just need to move the camera inside there and yeah hopefully it will work we'll do some further tuning in Octoprint changing a few settings managing a few plugins etc but that will be in a later video. I'm basically at the, nearly at the middle of the print for the new layer fan. There is something that I noticed that I wanted to show. As well, yeah, you can see it properly. As you can see, there is a layer shift on the Y axis. And yeah, this basically means that I still need to further tune the some of the voltages, most likely, on the motors to get more perfect results. So. Yeah, this means that my view of the duet Wi-Fi isn't going to be that soon. But the review of the 
my boss, the, the PlayStation Pizza Orion, that that's coming pretty soon. And yeah, the sprint won't be perfect, but it's not really that big of an issue in my opinion, unless I get like a massive layer shift, I'm still confident enough that I will use it. But yeah, let's wait for the end result before we speculate. The print is now done, as you can see, there are in total three pieces. I found this design in on Thingiverse, it includes these two pieces. I'll link it in the description below, it's supposedly designed to fit the Black Widow with the Flex 3 Drive Extruder. We will see once we mount it. I did design a piece like this, which I plan to stick here using more screws and yeah the basic idea is to just extend this and hopefully that will give me enough clearance to get rid of the additional space that the, my Z probe the precision piezo probe that but yeah we will see once I mount this I will be using my one of my older Noctua fans I'm a huge fan of Noctua pun intended but yeah that's it, so I'm going to install this in between the next video. I don't really have the time to actually show you, show that to you, unfortunately. I'm recording this right before I'm supposed to edit and upload, but yeah. If there's no problem, which I assume there won't be, you will see this in the next video. And other than that, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave me a like down below. A review of the Precision Piezo sensor is coming pretty soon because I'm pretty confident in my opinion about that at this point. So yeah, stay tuned for that if you're interested in that and otherwise, thanks for watching.